Now let's do a more advanced dynamic block. This is going to involve more than one parameter and more than one action as well as more than one attribute to go with this dynamic block. We're going to do a, Z a section view label. Like this is a common de detailing element that goes on to a plan view to denote that there's a section view to accompany um, this portion of the drawing. So I have a circle which has a diameter of 0.5. This is so that we can put text not only in the top semicircle but the bottom semicircle part. I have a line, a line going through the circle and then a line connected to an, to an arrowhead which you can get in a number of ways. You can do a, can do a smart dimension and then and then explode it and pretty much delete everything except one of the arrows be sure that everything is on the zero layer here we want everything to be on the zero layer so that when we're complete with our block and when we go to place it in an actual drawing it the block is going to match the layer that we are on so that we can set the block to any layer that we want. So I'm going to do everything on the on the zero layer here. So I'm going to select everything and then go to insert and then create block. Let's call it section view label. The center point, I'm going to pick it at the center of the circle. And I'm going to make it annotative because I want the scale to change based off the layout and then of course make sure this is check open in block editor but say you forget it's not a big deal all we have to do is hide is highlight the block right click and then go to block editor all right now we're ready to get the dynamic part uh, going here so first let's add the attributes I'm going to go up to Attribute Definition in the Block Editor tab. First one's going to be Section View. Oh, and you cannot have spaces in annotative tags. Section View Number. This, this is the number of the section view. And we give it a number so that you know when there's more than one section view we have a way of labeling them say we had like 30 section views on one sheet we would want to be able to differentiate between all of them let's put the default as a hashtag let's do justification let's do mid let's do bottom center we're going to do annotative text make sure it's 0.125 I'm doing annotate or I, I'm doing bottom center I'm doing bottom center now because I'm not going to put it right in the center of the circle what I'm going to do is track a little bit above the midpoint line that I have it's going to be just right above it there we go section view number and then I'll add another one sheet ref let's, let's say sheet ref enter the sheet reference here this is where the section view is actually located so we know which page to turn to let's do three hashtags there we'll also do bottom center here annotative text make sure annotative is checked here and it's 0.125 and actually sorry let's not do bottom center let's do top center where's top center at top center there we go because this one I'm going to track a little bit downwards now. And it doesn't have to be exact. There we go. So now we need to add some stretch actions to not only this line, but this line as well. So first I need parameters, right? So I'll do a linear parameter. It's going to be from the endpoints of the line. So here's the first one. And then here's the second one. And 
And uh, let's go ahead and include the arrow in on this one. There we go. All right, and then I'll do the first stretch action for distance one. So I'll go to actions and then stretch. I'm going to select the distance one parameter. Select the point of associativity. My stretch window. And then I'm going to stretch the line. There we go. Do the same thing for this side. I'm going to add a stretch action. Choose my parameter, which is distance 2. Choose my associative point, which is down here. My stretch window. And make sure to in include the arrow and the line here. And I'm going to select my objects, which are going to be not only the line, but the arrow as well. Or the arrowhead, sorry. All right. Let's test this thing out. Let's test it out. So I'll go to the test block. Make sure it works. I'll check the first one. Should be able to stretch this. There we go. Easy peasy. And then let's check this one. Yep, this one works. The line is stretching, but the arrow is not stretching. Because I included the full arrow, I didn't do a partial of the arrow. I did the full arrow inside the selection window. So it doesn't get stretched. It moves along with the line. So let's close the test block because we still got a couple more things to do. We need to add rotation parameters to to not only this line but the line with with, with, with the arrow. And they need to be separate because we might want this line over on the left side, but this arrow we might want we 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 might want it pointing down. So we want to be able to rotate the line with the arrow and the line by itself separately. So first I'll add the parameter. This is going to be a rotation parameter. And I'm going to do very similar to a grid line. I'm going to start at the center of the circle, which is going to be my base point. And then the radius is going to go out to the radius of the circle. So I'll just snap to one of the quadrants. And then my default angle, let's make it, uh, let's make it zero. So that's angle one. And I'm going to need to add a second one because I want it to be, I want these two parameters to be independent of each other. It's still going to have the base point at the center. It's going to have the same radius. Except I'm going to make the default angle of this one, I'm going to make it 270. There we go. 270. There we go. And I'll place it like over here. That works. All right, so I have a default angle zero, which that's going to be my point where I'll rotate about for this line without an arrow. And then 270, that's going to be my rotate point for the line with the arrow. So then I'll add independent uh, rotate actions. Rotate, I'll select my angle one here, and I'll select my object, which it's not only going to be the line, remember it's not only the line, but it's the distance one parameter as well. Now add another one for angle two parameter, and then select my objects, and it's the parameter and the arrow and the line that we want to rotate. There we go, press enter. Should be good, let's test this thing out. All right, here we go. If I click on this, I should see four points. First point, I can rotate the line and also elongate it. Yep, that works. Second point, should be able to rotate the line with the arrow and still elongate it as well. And it works, perfect. I can close the test block and save this.
save block, close block editor, and there it is.